Welcome to Resin Shine BJD's Disgust, a raw, unfiltered pet talk from your two favorite dolls, Fairly Psycho and Chaos World. Grab something cozy, because we're about to spill the tea. Episode 2, Traveling with BJD's. I don't even know how to start these off, actually. I'm not going to lie. That is okay. <laughs> Why don't we start off with, how are you doing? <laughs> I know we kind of had our little chat uh, behind the scenes, but how are you? True, true. <laughs> Very good. Happy to be talking about my favorite subject, dolls. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's so, it's it's nice to sit down. I think, um, what is what is the word I'm trying? Editing the podcast last time made me laugh so much. It was so enjoyable to do. Just, you know, Mm -hmm. being able to talk to somebody else that you have a bond with. It's not just like a stranger or something, but you also have the same interest, you know, so you like can (laughs) talk on another level. (laughs) So true. So I was even like telling a friend once where I'm like, oh, sometimes when I'm like doing doll adventures or like looking at doll things, my partner's being supportive when I'm like telling him about it and being like, oh, that's nice. But it's, he doesn't get it like versus someone who's actually active <laughs> in the hobby. Yeah. That's definitely, it's like with Steven, I have gotten him into the hobby, but there's also times he's more interested in times where he's just like I just want to play my video games so it's like it's not the same yes he's into the hobby with me but I don't think it's quite the same <laughs> he's not at on the same level of interest right um, fair enough <laughs> you have any life updates any doll updates you want to share maybe behind the scenes with your dolls um yeah my behind the scenes is I have a bunch of of dolphies now <laughs> oh my goodness from your trip well some from the trip and then i some of them i just like ordered some heads oh, so nice. i have like some extra heads now which is actually pretty fun, fun. i've been getting one yeah i've been getting some with like i would say i'm trying to get some with like a little bit of different expressions mm-hmm. so that's actually been a lot of fun i'm like Ooh. so then i had to rearrange my like craft room to, to make space <laughs> <laughs> which was not bad do you do the face-ups for your dolphies no way it's really hard <laughs> never mind it on is, that it's, one <laughs> it's, it's like next level like it's a lot harder than with resin hmm. i'm sure like probably once you get the curve it's not so bad but you have to act have like actual skills <laughs> <laughs> to do dolphin faces is that something you look forward to doing in the future or you're just like nah <laughs> i'll just let the pros do it i have to let the pros do it because i don't have steady hands mm. so it doing stuff like their liner for their eyes and eyelids it just will not come out it'll just be all shaky for me <laughs> so um we were going to do like explaining our traveling like how we travel with dolls and talk about our last travels then answer some questions that we had about like how we do that and everything yes um how many times have you traveled with your dolls i've only traveled with like on the airplane uh with a bjd once all my other times like i don't know if it counts as traveling but i do take them out a lot when i go like maybe i go shopping or i go you know to an event maybe that counts but actually traveling to another place i've only done it once i've done like on a plane twice Mm -hmm. and then like i think a few times just like traveling i guess like local like Mm -hmm. in the city or just like a city over type thing because I've been to Doll North. I'm trying to think. I, I've been to Doll North quite a few times now, so I can't remember the exact number, but <laughs> I usually bring a, at least one doll with me when I go there. And then I 
been like I've been to the parks just to take like some photos and I've done like a few little meetups and that type thing so I've traveled like more within my country type thing Mm -hmm. quite a few times do you feel like there is a quote-unquote ideal and proper way to travel with dolls I would say yes in like terms of them not getting broken Mm -hmm. you just kind of want to try to bring them around as securely as possible do you follow those ideal proper like scenarios i I would say for the most part yes and i think Mm -hmm. a bit more flexible too on like how you can transport your dolls too like i know everyone as soon as they think about it they automatically think about those like Volks or like Dalmore carrying bags Mm -hmm. you don't have to use those ones to be able to transport your dolls safely there's also other ways as well Mm -hmm. which will definitely with the stories go into like the methods of carrying right (laughs) oh I'm sorry (laughs) you said that and I thought I don't know why my brain instantly switched to carrying um handheld weapons not dolls (laughs) And dude, I need to switch my security brain off. <laughs> I gotta carry on. <laughs> right. That's just, I need to switch that brain off. Okay, hold on. <laughs> um, oh, that's funny. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the times the ideal way to travel that I hear is like having the face mask on and I think, I don't really know how the majority of people do it, but I feel like I've heard them say take the wig off and actually put, like, wrap it around and put it in a little bag. I don't do any of that, I'm going to be honest, but... um... I've done both, Mm -hmm. and from my experience, it didn't make that much of a difference. Mm Mm-hmm. So I find I guess like for some people if you take the wig off depending on how like you're traveling if you take the wig off it won't get like as tangled and messy. True. But I always brush like I have like a little toothbrush that I carry around with me. So I just brush the wig anyways Mm -hmm. whether they were wearing it or not. So Mm -hmm. I found it didn't make a difference for me but maybe some people find it's a little bit easier if it's separate. And also, some people find that the mask might be a bit more of a snug fit mm, if yeah. you don't have the, the wig. But the masks I have, you use like ribbon to tie it to the head. Mm. So mm. the wig doesn't impact that. So I think it just depends on what kind of mask you're using. Because they also have different face protectors too. Like people have different ones they use. And some people use like the not technical face protector Mm -hmm. once as well so i think that determines on what you want to use yeah i don't um just a warning for everybody who may have a heart attack hearing this i don't really use protection when i carried at least when i took him with me to travel in june i didn't use any type of face protection or wig protection I didn't use a face protection because he doesn't have eyelashes, so I'm like, I'm not worried about smushing the eyelashes for the Uh face up. I know I don't want to get that scratched up. I wrapped him in an old scarf Uh that I don't really use. I wrapped him in that, and then I stuck him in a tripod bag because I didn't have a carrying... I had one for Julian, who's my... Um, no, who is my YoSD size, but I didn't have a size for my MSD, so I put him in that tripod case, which I have like a million of them because of my tripods, but I never use it. And then I stuffed, yeah. I wrapped him in the scarf, and then I put like another blanket in there, kind of to um, cushion him. Oh. But by the end of the of traveling, because I had to condense my bags, I ended up having him loose in my bag with only the scarf around him. That was pretty much how Ooh. I traveled. <laughs> so not probably not the safest way. Um, 
But it worked out. He came home safely with no collateral damage, as far as I know. <laughs> oh, there you go. So it worked out in the end, anyway. Mm -hmm. I would say I've had different methods. So, like, traveling, like, on plane, what I did for both of my trips is I got, like, a carry-on suitcase. Mm -hmm. And then I put my dolls in the carry-on and... I had some leftover bubble wrap, so like bubble wrap them and then put their face protector on. And then I think I, for the big journey, I took their wigs off, but you don't have to. And that's mostly how I did it. The carry on is pretty secure, especially if you have more than one. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like packed in there pretty tightly, so they're not going to move around. And that's how I did it for my first two like plane trips. Did you have anything else in your carry-on, or was it only the dolls and, like, cushion? I only put my dolls in them. Because mm. you can have your carry-on, and you can have a purse as well mm -hmm. for other stuff. Or a backpack. So, yeah, the carry-on I put strictly just for the dolls to be in. Yeah, I did. When I did my trip, I, only, I did not have a check-in bag. I only had my carry-on. So my clothes were in there, and I couldn't fit Kai. I ended up bringing him. I couldn't fit him in the carry-on, so I put him in my backpack. All was fine and dandy, except for the fact that they changed the rules. Now if you have a loose blanket, even if it's just a throw blanket that's not even that big, it counts as a carry-on, and you can only have two. What? Yeah, so I had to... That's why I took him out and just had him with the scarf only, because I really needed to condense and push everything into my backpack that wasn't planned to be in there. So it wasn't the yeah. best way to travel. I think now that I know, I'm going to make better decisions for next time. But, Ooh. I mean, it still worked out for me. It's just with that change it really it stressed me out a lot trying to fit everything in there but the way back was perfectly fine because i knew what the rules were so i was able to plan while i was at the house and not trying to plan while i was at the airport so it worked out mm. in the end yeah i found the very first time you do it you're gonna be so stressed mm -hmm. like <laughs> <laughs> you just don't know what to expect like even to with security people i've heard a wide range of experiences of what people get with their adult security mm -hmm. i've been very fortunate and i've had zero problems with security mm -hmm. and all i think the one time this lady asked like oh what's in there and i said dolls and she's like voodoo doll <laughs> and I was like, no. Like, I mean, the hobby, they're like all jointed dolls. And I was like, do you want to see them? And she's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Just keep going. Yeah, I was like, okay. <laughs> this is funny. Yeah, I was laughing so hard. <laughs> I can move dolls in there. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I had one of my vinyl dolls in there and he was disassembled. Because oh. I bubbled like the arms and like the legs and stuff so, like, <laughs> for like no <laughs> i do have a question that relates to that it was what fears did you have like when you first were traveling with them versus what was the reality mm -hmm. of that oh uh, one of the fears was of course like probably is common you'd get a fear whether it's rational or not, of them getting confiscated for mm -hmm. whatever reason. Then I did see um, from someone else's video when they traveled, they had their strong doll. And for some reason, I don't know why, the security cut the string <gasps> for, the, mm -hmm. for the resin doll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, of course, their doll fell apart. And they said nothing was, like, damaged, but... They couldn't put their doll together because they didn't bring backup strings. Mm -hmm. They didn't expect them to cut it. So I was scared that they were going to do that because especially related with the hook in their head. I mm -hmm. don't know if they would have deemed it like this is dangerous, yeah. <laughs> that type thing. So I was super scared about that. But yeah, they did not care. I could kind of see, like, I don't think that was a fun experience obviously getting it cut but mm -hmm. my security brain says okay 
you know, maybe there's some cocaine in there. You don't know how people are are going to stick yeah. things. So um, cutting the string probably to somebody who's not in the hobby was like, and who was doing security was probably like the best option. Knowing that story, now I think I will bring extra string with me because if it does happen, mm-hmm. like personally, I'm not going to tell how, I'm not going to tell people how to feel, but personally I wouldn't feel upset because I'm like, okay, I can see from a security standpoint what that reasoning was so let me just bring extra string but um Mm -hmm. that is definitely um what is that called that is definitely a very sad experience especially like having that string to be able to restring them Mm -hmm. yeah i definitely did have a big fear with um with the security because I'm like, I don't know how it's going to show up in the scans. Like, will it even show the outline of there's a small humanoid thing in there? Or, like, will it not show up because of the material it's made out of? Like, I had no idea what was going to happen. Um, I also, in the mix of everything, I was already having anxiety because I've never been to that airport before and I was by myself Mm -hmm. so I was like not only do I have this doll and I'm not sure how it's going to go through security but I also don't know where I'm going and I know I have to take a Mm -hmm. plane or not a plane I have to take a train to the station and like so there is a lot of anxiety going on but the reality for me at the very least was they didn't even check my bag they checked my hat I had a hat on and they checked the (laughs) brim of the hat. They didn't care about the doll, at least from my experience. So um, I think the only other fear I really had was taking him out and taking pictures with, um, you know, sitting at the airport with a lot of people because it's one thing to go to the park and take pictures and people come and go. But then I kept thinking, what if the person sitting here watching me take pictures of my doll ends up being the person I'm stuck sitting with through the five-hour flight, you know? So I'm like, I really didn't want a conversation starter, so I ended up just keeping him in my bag. Um, If I had Steven or another person with me, I think I would be more comfortable doing it because then if there is a conversation starter, I can pass that conversation on to whoever I was with and they can deal with it, you know? Yeah, I get that. I still haven't, like, went out for, I guess, like, a photo shoot, like, completely solo. Mm -hmm. Because people will, like, stop you and start talking. (laughs) Yeah. About what you're doing. So I still haven't conquered that yet. (laughs) So relatable where you're like, is is this going to be a thing? Right. (laughs) Like... I get there's curiosity. Like, I'm not afraid of what people think of me. I I can care less, you know? I know what I am. Like, I know mm-hmm. um, my own opinion on myself, and that's really all that matters. But when it comes to start initiating conversation, I don't know how. I haven't learned how to tell people, I don't want to talk to you. Can you not talk to me? In a polite way. As so many people know how to, because I don't. Yeah. I'm like... <laughs> there is the excuse to the I gotta go excuse (laughs) yeah but you can't on the plane like where if they're sitting next to you like where do you go like I can't I can't figure it out so that was my fear and I so I didn't really do anything um but it wasn't like the biggest deal yeah and it usually ends up being pretty chill I think another fear I had was um depending on which airline you go with um, with your carry-on, sometimes they're, like, super strict with it, and, like, they won't even let your carry-on be a certain weight. Oh, yeah. So I was scared that my carry-on would be too heavy with resin dolls in there. <laughs> yeah. And then they would try, try to be like, you have to put it at the bottom of the plane, and I'd be <laughs> like, oh, my God, no! <laughs> <laughs> no, that was definitely a fear of mine um, because of the change when they're, like, you can't have a blanket which made no sense Mm -hmm. so getting onto the plane 
I needed my blanket to be inside of my bag. Once I got on my pl on the plane, I took the blanket out and then I just walked out. Um, when it landed, I walked out with the blanket out. So it really didn't it didn't make a fucking difference, but whatever. Um, but that was a fear. I had to try to stuff everything into my carry-on and I didn't have any check-in bags because I just I didn't want to have to wait for my bag when I got there. Um, and I was afraid that it wasn't going to fit because it didn't. Like in the little, like put your bag here to see if it fits. It didn't fit in there. Oh, yeah. Right. And I was like, oh, my God, like, I don't know what to do. And I tried, I spent, because I was there two hours early because they kept delaying. So I kept trying to figure out how to fit it in there, everything. They didn't even check how the, like, the stupid bag. I went in there. I put the bag in. It closed. And they're like, whatever. I'm like, I went through all of that for no reason, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I find that first time is just. <laughs> you just gotta go through it. Yeah, that's true. Just to see, because the second time I went, I was, I was not stressed at all. The second time, mm -hmm. I was just like, "Okay, let's go." <laughs> <laughs> I was even like, "Oh, I don't know if they'd let me walk through security, like holding one." I've heard of some people who have done it, mm -hmm. but I was like, "Yeah, just to be able to bring an extra, I would just hold one and carry." Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I have not tested that yet. Maybe in the future. Yeah. I um I like my hands to be free. Like so let's let's say we we're at the mall together and we went to eat somewhere and you know, sometimes mm -hmm. people get their drink to go and they're walking around. I have to finish my drink then and there. I hate things in my hand. So I feel like mm -hmm. that for me, I wouldn't actually carry my doll in my hand, but I might have like we talked about it before the bags that you can see the doll in i might carry something oh, like I that do like those. yeah i might carry that instead of like my backpack next time but actually carrying it in my hand i can't i find i don't know if that's my luck mm -hmm. they're hard to find yeah like they sell out mm -hmm. really fast <laughs> so i'm like dang so i remember i saw one it was so cute it was like for like msb sizing mm -hmm. and you could basically like make your own mini diorama in there like you could put a little tiny chair in there you, it had like stickers that you could put and like a wallpaper background you could stick like an insert this bag was fancy and then you could put your doll so it's like a little scene in your bag mm -hmm. and of course the second it released it was gone <laughs> i was like no i'm just too slow like <laughs> Because I, I know some people who I, I applaud who can, like, stay up till midnight or 1 a.m. or whatever, and they need to stay up to for when things release, and then they buy it. I can't. I just go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's one day, maybe secondhand. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They just need to make more bags, in my opinion. Yes, that would be fantastic. <laughs> some other questions I have, two that kind of go together... What did you do with your dolls when you ended up getting to the destination? And how did you feel having them with you? I actually, I absolutely loved it, having them with me. I loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, with the destination, I think the first one, I can't think of what I did for the first trip. For the first trip, I left them in the hotel and then but i did like on specific excursions on the trip i brought them with me but for the most part they stayed in the hotel and i think yeah for both trips it was like that like they stay in the hotel just looking pretty and then certain days i just bring them with me mm. what about you i so the vacation for context that i went to was visiting my mom and uh, I didn't do anything with him, unfortunately. I showed him off to my mom and my brother, and they were, like, jokingly saying, oh, that's creepy, like, what the heck, that's creepy, even though they know I collect dolls. So uh -huh. I ended up just keeping him in the room for the majority of the time. I didn't take him because we went dress shopping, so I didn't take him there because I wanted to focus on dress shopping. And then the other option to take him out with me would have been we went to a Celtic 
festival. Ooh. And I could have taken him with me, but again, I don't like holding things, so I just, he stayed in the room the entire time. Um, it felt nice to have mm. him still. Like, I didn't, I brought his little suitcase, like, it's a 18-inch doll suitcase, and I put clothes in there, and I brought a backpack, a miniature backpack, and put stuff in there as well. But I didn't do anything with it. He just ended up staying. But it was nice that he was there. And if I did need that comfort or just some time downtime, that I had that option. So it was like, I didn't regret it at all, even though I didn't do anything. That's I would say that's like the first step. So it's a good way. I found like now since doing the second trip, I got like a, a bag that's more traditional like doll bag like it has the length of the doll it has the straps you can put the body pillow bring their accessories all of that stuff so that will make carrying them around so much easier Mm -hmm. and i can't wait to go to more places (laughs) i think before my because it was always like i'd bring them impromptu so i also did you know those like reusable shopping bags oh yeah so I had like a more of a like a longer one. Mm-hmm. So I put my I still put their face masks and everything, but I put them in there laying down mm. and then carried them like that. And it went very well, like no problem. Very like depending on how you are, like some people like more discreet doll carrying. So that was definitely very discreet. Like no one would be able to tell there's dolls in here. It just looks like a shopping bag. Right. <laughs> and then My new one, it looks like a mini duffel bag. So, yeah, no one could tell what's in there. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be discreet, you have that option. I had, had like, two friends who they use backpacks as their way of carrying their dolls. Mm -hmm. So they, and they can hold up two or three in there. And it's, I'd say, a medium-sized bag. And they bend their legs and uh, they take their wigs off. I don't know if they use the face protector. It's slipping my mind. But they do take the wigs off and the hands off. And they put them in there. To, mm-hmm. And then they put the rest of the stuff in a different pocket. And it seems like it works really well. They haven't had any issues. Yeah. So there's some flexibility. And then they have the clear backpacks too. Yeah. <laughs> um, pet backpacks as well. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, the ones that are clean. Yeah. Oh, you can use those too if you really want. Mm-hmm. That is um, the Reddit link that I sent you. Somebody off. Somebody suggested that, and it. I don't think it said a cat bag. It said something, and then I was like, "What is that?" I clicked it, and I'm like, "I hate those cat bags." Let me just tell you, like, a cat does not want to go out in public with you. A cat wants to stay home. Just, just stop. But I was like, "Oh, that's actually a good idea for the dolls." <laughs> right. Um, but on that topic of like bags that are discreet, I think mm-hmm. um, when I was trying to look for a carry something to carry Kai in when I was traveling, I just came across um, one of like I said the tripod. It came with a carrying case, and I had him in mm-hmm. there. I did put him in that carrying case and then put him into my backpack because you can only have two carry ons. But mm-hmm. let's say like we're going to the park or something like you were saying if i carry that who's to say it's not a tripod or it's not expensive camera stuff like um you can really use those kind of bags i feel they're even like harder shell bags Mm -hmm. for tripods that you can put and it'll protect the doll more and no one will know that you have a doll in there it's true and another thing about the tripods and everything Though, depending on the ones that you get, it can be more affordable than, like, the brand name Mm. doll carrying bags. Because some of them, like, I saw one that was, like, a clear one, and it was $104 before tax. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, like, not everybody wants to spend $104 on just the carrying case, especially if you're not going to use it a lot. Mm Mm-hmm. So it might be a better alternative if you wanted to get maybe, like, the tripod case. Because I know for sure on Amazon you can get affordable ones. Yeah, mine came with the tripod. I have one that broke, and then I have my new one, and Mm -hmm. my light, what is that? My ring light has a tripod. 
all three of those mm-hmm. came with a bag with it. So I was able to just use that and I didn't have to pay anything because I just had it. I literally, I don't use the bags because the tripods have mm-hmm. a little handle. So when I'm taking it with me, I just hold it by that handle. So the bags mm. have just been gathering dust and I was able to use it. There you go. <laughs> Recycling. Next question I have. What would you do mm-hmm. differently? Like now that you've done a few traveling, what would you do differently when it comes to traveling with them? And when you are there, like, would you bring them out more? What would you do um, a little different than you did before? Uh, definitely bringing them out more. It's so much fun. Like <laughs> after like you get past like the nerve wracking, like, yeah, you have to be okay that people are going to stare at you, basically. Mm-hmm. But it's usually curiosity. Yeah. So, um, like, what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But once you get past that, it's actually so much fun to carry them around. Yeah. And, like, if you do want to snap, like, a quick photo for a memory, they're just right there. Mm-hmm. I remember I went to... It was supposed to be um Hello... Yeah, it was Hello Kitty Land, San Rio Poro Land. And they had, I did not bring my doll. And I was thinking about it, contemplating the whole time. Like, should I bring one? Should I bring one? And then I was like, no, I'm not going to bring one. And I should have, because it turned out there, they had little areas for you to take pictures of your figures and dolls and plushies. And I was like, (laughs) I'm so glad that I'm bringing them no matter what. (laughs) So you just, like, never know what you'll run into. So it's nice if you have them. That is so true. I think that might be it. I think that's the only difference. I'd bring them out more. Mm -hmm. It's the only difference. I definitely agree. Like, there's nothing else. I mean, now that I know more of, what is that, the traveling guidelines or whatever, the rules, I would definitely pack a little bit differently. I loved the fact that I didn't have to wait for my suitcase I love just having a carry-on and calling it a day but that means Mm -hmm. I have less space trying to bring my clothes and anything else I want to bring so I think Mm -hmm. I would be a little bit more picky of what I bring I probably won't bring my blanket because it was hard for me to be comfortable with it anyways and it takes too much space and just little things like that that I really didn't need but I brought it and you know um, I brought my tripod I didn't even Mm -hmm. use it so maybe next time I would bring like a selfie stick instead Um, so like downsizing that's what I'm trying to say downsizing what I bring with me so that I can comfortably bring Kai or Cole whoever I want to but Mm -hmm. going along with what you're saying bringing him out more I kind of regret because my mom had a backyard and everything I could have easily just went to the backyard and taken a lot of pictures with him or you know um, she has an Alice in Wonderland themed house so like just taking some more time and Mm -hmm. I say taking some more time but at the same time I was visiting my mom so we spent a lot of time going shopping or um watching movies so I might have not had time to do it but I think being more cautious about it next time to actually make that time to enjoy it with the doll for those memories Mm -hmm. but I think too that's part of the fun like the more you do the traveling the better you'll be at knowing like what you need what you don't need and what you do differently Mm mm-hmm Cause like some people like they do a whole thing. I saw this uh, one lady. She had like full outfit changes and weight mm-hmm. changes that she brought along with her, mm-hmm. like to do her photo shoots outside. Like she had complete sets there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's next level. Like I applaud, but I already know for me that is not gonna work. Right. <laughs> I guess the last thing, or sorry, do you have any questions? You were talking about some of the questions for the topic. Oh, yeah, we have, like, our our list of questions. All right, so it will put the question, traveling with dolls. 
Mrs. Um, question. Please share how you guys get around with your dollies. I'm looking to start going to local meetups near me, but that would involve an hour of public transportation, and I'd love to hear any recommendation. Oh, the Reddit. Mm hmm. Yeah. So we did have, um, like, we did have, like, a few suggestions with, like, the, that we talked about with the different types of bags and, like, how you can carry them, like, with the face protectors or a wig or no wig, that type thing. Mm -hmm. You sometimes, some people take their shoes off, just whatever is easiest for you type thing. Right. Um, with this, so, uh, I got a little confused. I thought there were questions. The Reddit, the Reddit was asking this. And I was reading yeah. some of the answers, and I think, like, what I got from this, and we'll go through some of the answers people put, but what I got from it is there's no one way to do it, which yeah. was shocking to me. Because when I go on YouTube and look up, like, how to travel, it's always the same bullshit. You know, have a carrying mm -hmm. case, have a face protection, get the wig into another bag, and have a bunch of padding around them. And that's, like, everybody and their mom shares that. But when I was reading through this, I was like, wow, there's a lot of different ways that people travel with their doll. And it was kind of interesting to see what people used, n not mm -hmm. just these expensive doll bags. I agree. And this is, like no shade at all it's just a reference if you want to look and read it up i don't know if her website is up right now but i know asenba wrote one of her blog posts about doll um like care travel bags because someone had asked her about it and she said in her blog from her opinion that she said that the best way to do it is if you buy a bag that is specifically designed for carrying dolls because that is how they're going to be the most safe and most protective mm -hmm. and from our discussion and what we're going to read i don't fully agree with that because yeah. there is lots of alternatives where you can safely bring your dolls around like the one of the bags i have it's not technically a doll bag but it's for carrying around um like mini printers Mm. So it has straps in it, and it fits your dolls perfectly. Wow. So, I didn't think about that. Yeah. So it's like, okay, the argument that they're not the best protected, it's like they very much are. They literally have straps just like a regular doll bag. There's extra pockets to carry their stuff. You just put your little pillows or whatever you would like to use, bubble wrap, whatever works for you. And they're going to be good. Like, they're definitely delicate dolls but they're not made out of glass right i feel like like for kai for example he doesn't have eyelashes like i was saying so getting a mm -hmm. face mask didn't make sense to me because i feel like those are more so like yes it cover it will protect the face up but i feel like more so it's for the eyelashes so they don't get smushed and stuff he doesn't have eyelashes so mm -hmm. i didn't need in my opinion a face mask but I still wanted to protect his face up, so that's why I had put him wrapped around the scarf. It was really soft. I didn't use my knitted scarf because I felt like, for whatever reason, it was more scratchy, if that makes sense. So I didn't want that to end up in some way scratching his face up, though it probably wouldn't have. The scarf I used was really, really soft. And I wrapped it mostly around his face up and then around the rest yeah. of his body. And then because his hands are magnetic, I did take those off and put it in a separate little case with some bubble wrap so that none of the fingers came off. And that's what worked for me. I didn't have a special bag or anything, but I really took Ooh. care of, okay, what are the pieces that I don't want to fuck up? His hands and his yep. face up. And then you find a solution for that. Exactly. And basically, if your doll made it through the mail undamaged, they're probably going to make it in the bag that you're carrying undamaged. Right. <laughs> because the mail people are whipping them. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so you're actually being cautious with them. So they're probably going to be all right. Right. I feel like the only thing I would say, and this is not with any type of experience, 
so take it with a grain of salt but if you're taking them as a carry-on i feel like it's a lot safer if you're taking it as a check-in bag where it goes through the I would system not recommend yeah it. i would not recommend that um no matter how protected they are because they throw the bags they throw bags on top of bags like that is mm -hmm. just a whole nightmare they might have like your tiny bag or carry-on case and they might put like a 60 pound bag on top of it mm -hmm. yeah so, so i would not take that risk at all a hundred percent just carry them on right i did like this post from i'm a doll underscore 12 that said i like pencil cases <laughs> for usds and smaller i also use eyeglass cases the hard shell ones for micros i think that's like oh that's a good idea right i didn't even think like pencil cases I only say that because I have so many cute, soft, fluffy pencil cases and stuff that I don't use. I just liked Ooh. that they were cute. That now I can use them as a doll carry-on, and it's cuter than the doll carry-ons that they are selling, you know? Especially with back to school. Yeah. That, that, I really liked their, um, their suggestions for that. It makes sense. Uh, my Be With You Mango, she says small usd she actually came in a, a pencil case i mean they didn't call it a pencil case because it had like their brand and stuff on it but it basically <laughs> was a pencil case right you know so <laughs> that was inside of the box <laughs> i think that would be perfect for usds mm -hmm. when i read that i was like that is such a good idea <laughs> it is a fantastic and Again, like, it's a, inexpensive as well, because if you go on, like, the Volks website, uh, USD bag is, like, I think, like, $55, give or take, mm -hmm. before shipping. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, if you're trying to just save a little bit of money, that's a nice alternative. Mm -hmm. I think I read another one. I, I can't, it's somewhere within the long paragraphs, but somebody just sewed like two pillow, not big pillows, but they made two little pillows to put, instead of buying the padding, they just made their mm -hmm. own, you know? Oh yeah. I, I did see that one, which I thought was pretty good. Mm -hmm. It makes sense though. Oh, I just read something by Mel, Mela777. I also have mm -hmm. a rolling scra scrapbook tote. I never heard of oh, that. Oh, I never thought of that. Yeah. I have padding and I have a padded, I have padded a backpack with blankets to seat a few mm. dolls inside. So like there's so many different options out there using what you have, using what's probably cheaper than you put doll in front of it and they're like, all right. A hundred more dollars. It's so true. It's almost like wedding. <laughs> yes. Don't get me started with that. More. <laughs> yeah. Um, someone said, okay, my UK language is not a hundred percent, but they said a pram, which I think is a stroller. And mm -hmm. um, they said it's a dog pram. Just happened to have one. And my back is not to carrying things. And my photo stuff goes in there. That's mm. actually not a bad idea. Though. Yeah. Have you seen those tiny little dog strollers? That is not a bad idea. <laughs> oh, and yeah. some of them have the covers too. Mm -hmm. I have like this uh, craft bag um, suitcase almost. Like it's a rolling bag that I put all my crafts in it. But I could see, mm -hmm. I don't have it with me, but I can see if somebody got something like that. They have their dolls. They can probably fit some clothes in there. And you can just roll, roll it like a little... Um, backpack a little rolling backpack because that's a good point oh, not yeah, everybody can use their back or carry things you know I didn't even think about that mm -hmm. oh especially if you're trying to attempt to bring a larger doll oh my gosh <laughs> yeah that's why I don't bring my like over 60 dolls because they're heavy and it's not easy to carry them around for long periods of time mm -hmm. but if you had something with wheels it would definitely make it so much easier yeah i like i'll leave the um or i'll send you the well you have the link but um we can leave that in the description because a lot of these ideas they 
like some of them have a particular BJD bag, but a lot of them Mm -hmm. use what they have. And I think Mm -hmm. that's actually really cool seeing the different ways. Like Academic Squirrel says, I use a camera backpack to travel with my MSDs, smaller camera bags or hard shell cases for the little ones. Tripod cases works as well. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like before I thought I was kind of not weird but it was kind of outlandish to use a tripod bag but that's what I had but seeing that I'm not the only one who thought about that it's kind of cool yes being resourceful in the hobby Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) well I do have let's see what was the next one what do you have like we kind of were talking about it but what are some other tips you (laughs) have for first time doll travelers I would say, I don't know if everyone does it, but before, like, I go, like, I don't pack them usually the day of. Like, I'll do a little test through beforehand. Like, so I'll put them all in whatever case that I'm going to bring to see, make sure everything fits okay, that they're, like, not rocking around too much. And just to make sure you know what it looks like, you know how heavy it's going to be so that the day of you're not more stressed if you're trying to like put them all in there and you're like, oh my gosh, they don't all fit perfect or how they're supposed to, or oh my gosh, I just realized it's too heavy, that type thing. Mm -hmm. So that helps with the anxiety. Oh yeah, that definitely is something I should have done because I, the night before, packed all my stuff inside of a duffel bag And then I had my backpack. Mm. I lift up that duffel bag. It was so freaking heavy. By the time I walked Mm. it downstairs, I was like, Dad, can we stop at Target and get a suitcase? Because this is not going to work out for me. (laughs) So we were buying a suitcase at Target on my way to the airport. Not a fun thing to do. (laughs) So, yes, I definitely. It is stressful. Yeah, I definitely would say to follow that tip. (laughs) It's better to be prepared and know you're not being crazy by just seeing beforehand. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I definitely would, my tip, like we've talked about before, see what you have, you know, especially when it comes to the different type of carrying cases that you might have, especially for your smaller dolls. Like, we probably have a couple of pencil cases that are just lying around with maybe some junk we can actually get rid of or something you know um Mm -hmm. because having being able to use my tripod bag saved me what 50 bucks at the cheapest you know using a backpack you have and not really worrying about the ideal way to carry your dolls and just finding what you have and using it I used a freaking scarf I didn't even have like a nice pillow uh, thing for him to be in I just wrapped him in a scarf and called it a day exactly and I think something I hadn't really realized to before traveling because it wasn't that big of a deal um you don't always get especially if you buy a lot of your stuff secondhand you don't always get doll pillows very often so mm-hmm. have, being able, like you said, to use something like a scarf or like a little blanket or maybe like a nice soft sweater, that helps. Yeah, I think what I'm actually going to do, because I feel like making a pillow is pretty easy. Coming from somebody who doesn't really sew, you just get two oh, yeah. rectangle pieces of fabric, sew it around and put mm. some stuffing in there. And now I'm like, maybe I'll just make my own um pillowcases because i'm big on customizing stuff like i don't want a basic bag Mm. like backpack right i don't want a basic black backpack i rather have a mario backpack or a pokemon backpack Mm. you know so being able to make my own doll pillow i don't want a random polka dot doll pillow i want one that has you know scarecrows all over it or something like that you know so now i'm thinking Mm. I might go see what fabric I have and make my own after this. <laughs> yeah, it's actually really easy. I've made um, doll pillows before, and yeah, it's easy peasy. Mm. <laughs> it should be no problem. Just be careful with um, for the fabric you pick for your pillows. 
since it's for dolls that it's not too dark so it doesn't bleed onto them that that's is it true that's true because i find like a lot of the pills i've seen are just like basic white because mm -hmm. i know they're just trying to be like as safe as possible right but it would be nice to have some more like oh i like cutesy stuff so maybe like uh, a teal a nice like teal one or like a baby blue or like a a light a pastel pink i don't really see those as much I feel like if we if you made it yourself what at least what I would do because I have some Halloween fabric you know I love Halloween I have Halloween fabric mm -hmm. and you brought that up about making sure it's not dark colors and I think a lot of them are dark but I think what I'm gonna do mm -hmm. is I'm gonna have like the inner pillow that's gonna touch the doll I'll have that white but then the top piece can be the color or the pattern that I want so oh, perfect right so it's still gonna be cute but he's still gonna be protected so i'm gonna have fun with that actually oh i'm so excited <laughs> yes oh, i can't wait to see what you make <laughs> you'll have to update us in like a wine and dollies <laughs> yeah i'm overdue for that <laughs> let's always how it goes that that has like a whole nother topic too because like just like a tiny tad tangent won't go too far into it i I know, like, everyone makes, like, their own version of Wine and Dollies, but mm -hmm. I find with how the YouTube algorithm has changed, it makes it so hard now to find people's Wine and Dollies because they might call it, like, Tea and Dollies or, yeah. like, Thoughts and Dollies or right. Snack and Dollies and stuff. So it's so hard to find it versus if everyone used the same title so you know what type of video yeah, I know, like, when I was wa re-watching a lot of them, there was two arguments. There was, I don't want to call it wine and dollies because I never have wine, which is totally fine. I've so never had deal. wine in my wine and dollies. I might have had, like, a vodka with my soda, but mostly it's just soda and water. But, you know, some people mm -hmm. are literal with it. But the other one that I heard, and I don't know how true it is, is that wine and dollies have quote unquote become um, associated with recast? So nobody who's oh I have that, but I think honestly, I honestly think that some haters started. Yeah, I think that they might have started that because when it first came out, because I was there when it first became a thing. Mm -hmm everyone was making those type of videos like whether you're a pro artist neutral uh, i wouldn't say there was like pro recasters doing it but like more like pro artists or like neutrals were doing it and so it was just a chat video that's the whole point of them mm -hmm. just to chat right. so i think because the creator I don't know what she is now, but at the time she was like um, a neutral and um, I think she was one of her updates. She had bought a recast, so she was talking about it and she disclaimed like she, she said, like, this is a recast, like you can skip ahead and stuff like that. I just wanted to talk about it and she just showed what she got and like what she was going to plan to do with the doll. So I think people were mad about that. And I think that's where the whole thing started with it being like, oh, this is a recast thing, which is not true. It's just literally you talking about your plans with your dolls. God forbid the person who decided to bring a community together does something the fuckers don't like. God forbid. Right? <laughs> you know? Ugh. Because, like, crazy. I've watched tons of them, and it's not, like, oh, hey, guys, this is just my, like, recast collection type thing. It's like, no, you're supposed to be able to be free and just talk about what you're doing. And for some people, they wanted to share that's what they got. They weren't promoting. They weren't going, like, okay, guys, like, this is the website to get it and all this stuff. Not at all. They were, like, yeah, I got this recast doll, and this is what I'm doing with it. <laughs> It was that. So I don't know if that's like <laughs> a crime now, but yeah, I think they were just upset about that. Well, I think that's it. Do you have anything else you wanted to add to traveling with dolls and what we've done and stuff? I think that might be it. <laughs> I think it was really fun to explore the different ways that we travel. I've, I, especially because like, 
let's be honest, when we're comparing the way I travel with Kai and the way you travel with your dolls, they're different. Mm -hmm. Not only do you have more experience because you've been in the hobby for a long time, but you seem more cautious, not cautious, you seem more careful with them versus me i was mm-hmm. like at the end of the day i threw him in my bag with a scarf and called it a day and it worked out you know but then also mm-hmm. seeing other ways people travel it's really interesting because then you can find okay what's going to work for you your budget and the way you handle your dolls are you more careful with them if you're more careful with them you might be able to skip some of the more quote-unquote protective stuff but if you're <laughs> if you're heavy-handed or you just throw shit around, you might need a little bit more co- um, protection in that sense. So it was nice to see the different ways people did things. I agree. And hopefully, definitely comment below like how you carry and travel with your dolls, because I would love to know. Yeah, give some tips and tricks. The comments always give me, especially being a newer collector, the comments always Ooh. give me the best tips. <laughs> Oh, nice! That's perfect. I'm loving that. Yeah, so let us know how you travel with them. Exactly. And if you have a lot of experience traveling with dolls, or if you're, like, more newer, I do like to know. I, I'm always, of course, even being, like, super nosy. I'm like, how many people go out <laughs> with their doll? <laughs> yeah. Share your experience and everything like that. Because mm-hmm. so there's not anyone in my city, I don't think. There might be one, but yeah, there's like no one in my city who has ball jointed dolls. So it's like, I want to know, like, if there's <laughs> other people who walk around with them because I'm like the only one. <laughs> right. And who knows? Maybe that person that you're walking by that has their camera case, there's actually a doll in there. We never know. That would be amazing. I'd be so happy. <laughs> the only time I see people walking around with dolls is at Doll North. Mm-hmm. And. But they're coming from all over the country. So it's not like my city type thing. Yeah. So it would be really interesting. <laughs> what speaking of in the future, we should definitely talk about like conventions and stuff like that. Yes. See, I haven't been to a doll convention per se. So meetups count. Yeah, I haven't been to that either. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. But it would be a really good learning experience because you know again you've been in the hobby for a long time maybe i can mm-hmm. muster up the courage once you uh once you share that stuff with us <laughs> there's like so many oh maybe we should have a like, well i don't know if it'll be hard but maybe we should get a guest for it too for that one that's true yeah yeah because i know like for each person like their experience with it is like can be vastly different mm-hmm I say stay tuned for that. Yeah. I say for listeners, stay tuned for that. <laughs> for our doll friends that are watching, let us know what else you want us to talk about. Um, exactly. I was even thinking on YouTube to make polls of like which topics they would like to hear next and mm-hmm. everything. And of course, you can comment below. Yep. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> but I think that's it. Um, and we have an outro already, so we don't have to really worry about an outro so (laughs) the end i think don't forget (laughs) to like and subscribe (laughs) yes so other people can find the podcast and we can grow our community and talk about more stuff and then like i said maybe in the future we could even have some people who want to be guests come on right let us know um you know if you want more of our sassy (laughs) un filtered opinions definitely leave us I that like it. yeah you're not gonna hear the cookie cutter that's for sure oh hell no <laughs> <laughs> nope spice levels 100 <laughs> the way i like it <laughs> all right bye for now Bye. that's it for today to listen to our behind the scenes segments of today's episode be sure to check out fairly psycho's video available now